25 weeks out. I think I haven't talked to you guys in like two weeks, so it's been a little bit, had some travel to do, did a seminar and came to the gym to record for everyone and ended up I didn't have my correct tripod mount because I will vlog this myself. So we are here and now I'm just counting down weeks to the show because why not? I think I've told you that before. So currently, just a quick little update before we jump in to today, we'll do a push session little bit of shoulder focus. You've probably seen this session before, but some few minor differences that we'll, we'll touch on. So currently, uh, waking up, I was 2.49 this morning. Um, we'll probably have some post-workout footage to show of me posing somewhere, maybe here, I don't know, if uh, decides what Renee, where she wants to put it, but you know, about 2.51 in the gym posing. So body weight has been literally increasing. I had a week where it did slow down a bit, so I put a little bit more food in. So sitting on training days right now at uh, 600 grams of carbs, 340 grams of protein, and 55 grams of fat. So had a 40 gram carb addition that I made. Non-train days did the same thing. Uh, had a five gram bump in fats and added in 30 grams of carbs. So now that day is 280 grams of carbs, 340 grams of protein, and 75 grams of fat. Why more fat on my off days? Well, that's usually a day that Renee and I will have like steak or salmon or something with a little bit more fats in it. So just a preference thing. Uh, cardio still hitting after all my upper sessions, these uh, hit uh, sessions. They'll do five sets on this going back to back on the spin bike and the battle ropes for a minute, about 80% um, effort and steps still averaging around 10,000 per day. So this has been very, very consistent and just seeing like good steady progress and staying relatively lean like all the visuals still look very very good and still have uh, about about five weeks or so before i pull back everything we'll jump into the session and i'll give you a few updates as we go on uh, some of the some lab work things that came up and also some pd changes that i made so let's get going So first movement of the day is lateral machine raise prime. One thing that I have changed is doing it single arm. Uh, I found that I can just fit in the machine better. And you probably might tell in the video, but I'm actually, the working arm is turned away from the cams a little bit. And so this is, allows me to stay, and then instead of going right out to my side, a little bit more in the scapular plane. So for one, you get a bit more shoulder stability that way and also less binding in the, like, the rotator cuff when it comes up. Um, but I also find that I can just brace really, really well that way. I can grip like the front bar. I can use my hand to leverage that handle and put in some internal just rotations, a little torque on that arm. And I just feel super locked in that way. And I still have, I'm, I've like maxed out the machine this way though, because it does give you a bit more leverage because that pad can come a little higher on the arm. So just keep that in your mind. If you're like, man, John's crazy strong in this. Well, it's, well no, it's a mechanics thing. It, since the pad's coming up, it, it does give you some advantage. But point being is that um, I can just really get great connection with my delt doing it that way and uh, comfortable in the shoulder joint. So I do four sets there. On the last two sets, um, I hit two working sets on the prime rear pec deck fly. So this is an addition that I've added in volume wise just uh, as I've just gone through this phase, just with the rear delt. I mean, just want, you just want big round delts. So uh, my, my volume on rear delts is a little less. I've done just some extra sets at the end of my pull sessions. So on this shoulder day, I just go back and forth on the prime rear pec deck fly, doing them that way. You'll see that I kind of lean into it. And this is the same kind of rationale. If you look at like rear delt fiber arrangement and also getting the full range. If you were to be like at a 90 degrees of the torso, you'll feel like your delt kind of maxes out and maybe it kind of feels a little uncomfortable. But if you drop the arm down, you're able to go back and go into shoulder extension a lot farther and actually fully shorten that rear delt. So if you lean forward like that, you actually put yourself in that plane to come down uh, in, that, in that same, like, you know, probably more like a 60 degrees with the torso or something like that. So that's uh, the first part 
of just delt work, then we'll get into an incline press. Guys, the pump is just crazy today. Um, I'll talk about PD changes next, but anyway, having fun with today's session. So, moving on to an incline hamstring press. So, this is about the steepest angle that I press at. Going anything over just ends up having reoccurring shoulder problems, just too much external rotation overhead. So, I get plenty of front delt work through this. Um, I am not locking these out. <laughs> so, the hamstring machine, it does get pretty heavy on the top end to lock out and you end up like, what I find is my triceps fatigue out before even my chest does. So doing lengthened partials, that is like, you know, the, the hot topic in the research world. Uh, but I've been doing this for a while. Actually, Jay Cutler's been doing it even longer. So I just, I found just for my own chest development, I get more out of it, not locking out and uh, just fatiguing out off that, that bottom end, which we're talking like, getting three quarters of the way up like it's it's pretty far up there so um, and as I've gone through I need to do some form resets uh, you know you, you like you like chasing the log but I can't I can't lie like I like it so uh, my last chest day I ended up dropping a set out of chest volume just because it was that much more accurate and chest was like so sore doing even less volume so just the accuracy of your set, how you line up and cue everything and line up your form. It's, it's, it's imperative to make the volume quality. Otherwise, you'll just do more work and just beat up connective tissue more and not getting actually quality stimulus. So I, uh, today I'm kind of auto-regulating the volume. We'll see like how it feels stimulus-wise, um, how pump kind of sets in, how fatigue setting in, Deciding if I'll, I'll do three sets here or two sets. So back off set went really well. Actually that was <laughs> uh, 20 pounds up for my last session. <laughs> That's a pretty big jump. Uh, ended up matching the reps too. Just felt in control. So um, good stimulus off that. Like backing off some pressing volume in my last session. I now see it translate to over to this session. So I think I'll just leave off my third set here. So I think I'll have better carryover to these next sessions. Might have been training a little bit beyond what I'm able to recover from off like push volume. So I think that adjustment will be a good call, especially as accuracy is improving and I'm just getting stronger. It's just overall driving more total fatigue. So now, now this session, I do have the longest recovery to the next push session. I normally have three days rest. Then this, that, this session, I have actually four days rest before I hit it again. Um, so shouldn't be as impactful, the volume in this session, but e either way, I think it'll translate over to that, that Sunday session being really productive. Also, like just so you know, like when you're adjusting volume, a, a good indicator like on like your exercise basis is if you see like a large performance drop in that next set. So like for me, I like, did two sets on the incline press, like I still hit a performance best compared to my last session. If on that third session you see like for one within the session it drops off substantially or compared to your last session, like that's the set that really drops off, that might give some weight to, you are doing too much volume just within that one exercise and putting it into another one or one that's less taxing like a fly, right? So I keep my volume in my isolation movements because systemically they're less taxing. So just some indicators like thought process of what, like what I'm thinking as I'm going through the session. Next movement, go to decline hamstring press. I use this more of a close grip press. Uh, it just, I can't get into like a real good dip position and end up not getting a lot of range. So this one's nice because I can grip the handles really, really narrow and let that elbow flare out. So it ends up putting like a pretty good um, disadvantage at the elbow, which makes it a lot of tricep bias. So um, have this on my, this is more of my, again, my shoulder day, but also tricep day. So. On this one, I do have three sets planned and likely will carry those out fully as uh, triceps with the volume that I have seem to recover pretty good.
So finishing out some isolation work, I go back and forth on sets between front pec deck fly and also just a single arm tricep push down. So hit four sets here, so get a good amount of volume here, but again, performance like stays up pretty well on these. So on the prime pec deck, I do set it up to where it loads lengthen in the stretch. And because this is like towards the end of the session, so it's a little bit harder to get the muscles short and stay in the 12 to 15 rep range on these. Just adjust the load as I need to, to stay within that rep target. And then on my single arm tricep exercise, I continually try to find ways to make this load as hard as possible so my elbows don't get beat up. I did move to, I don't even know what the attachment is that we have, but it's kind of ergonomic how it fits into the hand. Um, and I drive that elbow back into full shoulder extension because I almost can get a 90 degree angle with the forearm and that cable in the full stretch position, which would load the muscle the most. And then as you see, as I go into uh, elbow extension, that cable starts to line up really close uh, with the shoulders, so it's like dropping off tension as I go to lockout, which we all know lockout is the hardest part of the movement. So try to try to match the strength and resistance profile well on that one. But I do like the single arm because naturally the the arm, the hands move from in to out, and so any bar that keeps you attached in a single point can end up binding the elbow and wrist in funny uh, ways. So that's been really helpful for just being able to sustain training and not beat me up too much. And that wraps up upper body. We'll get into some calves and abs. Calves and abs at the end of push session. So I do four sets on leg press, just because I can load it heavier. Then also today I do four sets on the uh, rope crunch. And this is on a lat pull down station so I can get a good brace on the hip and just prevents the hips from swaying back and forth. And so you just really focus on lumbar flexion. And on the leg press, uh, big, big key here is like control the negative on the way down, slight pause in that stretch position and driving up. I don't worry overly amount about getting up to like full lockout. Just really try to own that LinkedIn position. Okay, and that wraps up today's session. Today's actually Valentine's Day, which Renee and I got a PlayStation 5. We're gonna be total gamers now and we're very inexperienced. <laughs> but we both had PlayStations as kids, so uh, it'll be fun to get back more like into adventure games. I think that's what we're into. There's some like couple games. One's called It Takes Two, another one called Sackboy. They sound so, so stupid, but they have like great reviews. So we're totally gonna be gaming on Valentine's Day today. I mentioned PEDs earlier. You're probably very interested in what I was gonna talk about. So I did pull my labs. Um, 11 weeks into this push phase and amazingly like my health markers have improved like <laughs> my hematocrit's gone down kidney markers are improved not that they're bad they're just even better um, my lipid profile my apo um, protein b actually went down a little protein a went down it's just a uh, i'm just in a very acceptable state for for health which is awesome so why? Lots of things. Uh, I think it's just not overdoing the surplus, not having big, large cheat meals, keeping cardio in, uh, just doing all the things that you should be doing as, as like treating your your bodybuilding journey like you're a true athlete. Um, not to toot my own horn. <laughs> I definitely make mistakes and I'm learning along the way. Estradiol, uh, you know, with the test I'm running, is at 100 picogram per mil. I tolerate it extremely well. So I am going to make a shift and pulling some Mastron out and putting some more test in. And also came across some quality primabolins. So I'm gonna drop out some Mast and add in about 50% back as Primo, which uh, if I can ever source that quality, that's probably the most benign compound there is, like on a milligram basis. So absolutely ideal. So we'll see how that fares on my lab work when I pull it at the end of this push phase. So those adjustments, and then the last thing was putting all my growth hormone at night. And I wrote, I just completed a full growth hormone lecture in JPU, uh, redid the last one, so that should be up by the probably mid next month. It's two hours long, just all about growth hormone and rationales of timing, dosing. So you'll have to check that out, it'll be substantial. <laughs> so uh, anyway, if you wanna just ask me questions, please join the J3U forum, it's 20 bucks. 
You can ask me whatever you want in there. But anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in, and I'll talk to you next time.